to Jurassic Park. Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this game of Age of Sigmar. Today I'm trying out my new Seraphim Force versus a Undead Force, which will be treated as the uh, Grand Host of Nagash. And the mission itself will be a little bit of a testbed for a possible maybe narrative campaign in the future. But with that said, let's have a look at the armies. Having a look at the Seraphim Force's 900 points. I got two Nisar of the Kings armed with the uh, uh, Bolt Spitter Blowpipe things, five Saurus Knights, I've got a Troglodon with a Skink, the Divine Rod, my commander, a Scarvet on the Carnosaur with the Disciplined Fury uh, as the Warlord trait. I've also got two units of ten Saurus Warriors with full command and spears, and a uh, Old Blood, and he, as you can see he has a shield. As for the Death Army, the Grand Host of Nagash, we got two units of ten skeletons armed with swords, some great guard armed with uh, great blades, three vodgeists, a white king being the general, who is the master of death, and a vampire lord with the uh, soul pike uh, spell. And as said, some more skeletons, and thirty zombies, which is far more than I am comfortable with. And we also rolled off, and uh, that six is the result for the. Death Army, and that one is uh, my uh, result. Yeah. And we will also be skipping the uh, alternate turns or the uh, random turn order, so to speak, just to keep things simple, especially when this is a kind of ish new scenario. So let's have a look at it. Now, the deployment will be on this side and that side. The idea with the uh, roads and the rivers here is basically that the rivers will be treated as impassable unless you have the fly special rule and we will come up with some plot reason uh, for that later on the point is the bridges are incredibly important right now and the land masses here are divided by these rivers we will also be treated as territories basically there are three territories to control this is really a test bed so let me know what you think the bridges are the only thing you can really cross without having the uh, fly special rule and uh, for plot reasons for example or a game reason, I should say, with the larger bases you are simply allowed to cross the bridges anyway, even though they shouldn't be able to fit. Now let's have a look at the deployment. Back with the uh, deployment. As said, the undead are going first, and we got 10 skeleton warriors on this side, supported by the vampire lord and three vargeists. We got the huge blob of 30 zombies over here, some graveguard, followed by the uh, general of the army, the white king, and and on the other side we've got 10 more skeletons. With that said, one of the uh, territories are being contested and one is being held by the dead. Now over to the Seraphon side. On the Seraphon side, I brought my warriors, so it's warriors on this side, with the Old Blood and Scar Veteran contesting this region. Over here, I've got uh, 10 skinks, 10 skinks, a troglodon, and some cavalry. And let's roll into death, turn 1. As for legions, turn 1, it was all too eventful. Basically, the entire line moved up. We got the skeletons, the body guys in front of them. Everybody who could run did so. The vampire lord is following behind the units. And the zombies are slowly charging up over the bridge, as well as skeletons. I can definitely see this becoming kind of a problem, since the small bases can kind of fit three of them at the same time. It could also be very interesting in, for example, a defensive scenario, but that's besides the point right now. Seraphon turn 1 coming up. Seraphon turn 1 was somewhat more eventful, kind of, ish. This flank moved up with my uh, knights getting into position. My skinks and the troglodon opened fire upon the skeletons, managing to kill one with the bolt spitters, which is kind of funny since you can spit, like, acid at them, but that didn't really do yak shit. 
And the shield even caught one of those since he doesn't have any rend on him. Wonderful. Over on the other side, I kind of got into position here. Tightening, tightening up my uh, cohesion over here with the Saurus Warriors, the Scarvet, and Old Blood to kind of prepare for the inevitable charge of the zombies, Vodgeists, and Skeletons. I'm Legions on the Gash, turn two. I'm not sure what the plan is here because I'm not really being attacked. No one really tried to commit to the charge, unless uh, you count those guys over here who failed by rolling snake eyes. Speaking of those guys, they had one skeleton returned to them through the deafening invocation of the White King. The zombies kind of shamble over the bridge, it's taking us good old time because it's a very small bridge. The bald guys just moved over to the side, and the skeletons kept moving up, and the vampire lord joined them. However, no one is really committing to the attack. I am feel it kind of feels like I'm being drawn into a trap here, but it looks a little bit too good not to take the bait. Surf on turn two can mostly be summarized in a big eh. A short to close combat kind of all over the field. The source warriors over here killed two skeletons and lost two guys in return. The scar veteran kind of ate the vampire lord completely without taking any wounds. The old blood in the back kind of just shelled out because he didn't get into close combat. However, that caused some problems over here since I lost four source warriors and almost killed one of the Vodagists. Over on the other side, the Trogodon and the Source Knights finished off the uh, Skeleton Warriors, Warriors just barely, thanks to the uh, Skins taking out two of them by shooting. Now over to Death, turn 3. Legions on the Gash, turn 3, saw a little bit more of an eventful turn. The Zombies charged into close combat, finishing off my Source unit, and the Vodagists on the other hand, of course at hand in killing Saurus, got, in turn, eaten by the uh, Scar Veteran. He did not sustain any damage. However, the zombies are probably prepared to torpid the hell out of me right now. Around this side, I didn't really lose anything, nor did I actually kill anything more than two skeletons. They held the ground in the morale phase, battle phase, though. As of right now, the uh, Death Player has his graveyard and his massive blob of zombies left, and the skeletons are still alive. On to Surf on turn 3. I charged my source leader, so to speak, into this uh, zombie blob. I saw him to wipe them out. Together with some combined firepower from this skin units. Those guys managed to kill one with the bolt spitters, and uh, the source lords killed six more. And also sustained a wound to the uh, Carnosaur. Kind of funny how the Vodgeists and Vampire Lord couldn't hurt him, but some goddamn zombie does. Over on this side, the Troidon moved up, and together with Skinks opened fire upon the White King, and did absolutely nothing. The Saurus Knights ran across on the other side of the field, attempting to control that zone and cut him off the rear. Into this battle, I lost another Saurus Warrior, killing uh, two more of their guys, and they lost another one because of combat resolution. So now they are down to three Warriors, and uh, I have seven of uh, my own guys there. Moving on to Death Turn 4. Legions on the Gash Turn 4. The Grave Guard departed to turn up and face the cavalry threat coming on over there, killing one of them and wounding another one. The cavalry, in turn, did nothing. But that was a very lucky charge, rolling double sixes. Speaking of lucky charges, well, a five and a six on this side, the Viking crashing into the Old Blood. Losing one wound did not harm him, though. One zombie was returned, however, four were killed by the Carnosaur who is not wounded at all. Another skeleton went down here, no swords were lost, but uh, the battle still continues. So as of right now, the Seraphon has one part of the uh, table, and the other two are contested. Seraphon turn 4. My swords warriors finally finished off the skeletons on that side, and the Carnosaur managed to knock down nine zombies. Another wound was caused to the White King, however the Old Blood managed to survive. The skins kind of stayed put because they're kind of just holding onto this landmass. I charged my Trogodon into close combat over here, only killing one Graveguard, losing another Saurus uh, Knight, which is kind of impressive in a very bad manner. But right now I'm still holding one landmass and two are contested, 
we got two more turns to go. Death, turn five, coming up. Legion for the guys, turn five. The White King and the Old Blood traded blues, but nothing really happened. Two of the zombies were resurrected by the Deathling Invocation, however, six of them got knocked down by the Carnosaur. Over on that side, the uh, Grave Guard finally managed to lay down for good. And that is pretty much it now, going into Seraphon turn 5. Seraphon turn 5 and endgame. As of right now, the Death Player decided to call it because we. Well, there's only the White King left. He did cause two wounds to the uh, Old Blood, though, so that is uh, well done by him. But my Saurus Wars crashed into the close combat against the zombies, and together with the Corner Sword, they managed to fill, finish them off. I attempted a shot with my Troll Dawn into close combat over there, but I rolled Snake Eyes. So I guess he didn't feel very angry at the moment. And other than that, I hold two of the regions, and one is contested due to the. Viking, although I have a hard time managing him surviving another turn. With that said, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about the uh, region and bridge scenario in the comments. And I'll see you around next time. Now to head in for the tactical overview. Now having a chat about the game in hindsight, I do believe this scenario in general wasn't very kind to the uh, Death Army, seeing as they could really amass their soldiers on one side. The British kind of had them divided into uh, smaller chunks which would make them very easy to digest. Another problem with that was basically the numbers of the uh, Death Army kind of became nullified seeing as they couldn't really bridge, cross the bridges fast enough, which in turn allowed me to gather my forces. Of course, I made a lot of mistakes too, I maybe should have focused a little bit more on keeping the troglodyte on closer to my main army so I could meet the head-on charge that could have been the uh, Death Player's tactic. And I think he kind of committed a mistake with the uh, far left side uh, skeletons there because those could have been put to better use on the uh, right side. But I think as a general the uh, scenario kind of worked but I think needs some more f some more honing so to speak. Maybe cutting it down to two bridges and two sides just to focus the fighting on one side. Kind of becoming the hot gate of the Spartans. But with that said, thank you for watching, and let me know what you thought about the game, and the uh, scenario in particular. As always, have a good one.